Well, here's a famous scene. Doctor comes up and says to Dr. Frankenstein, Well, he ain't moving. So, uh, nope, nope, ain't moving. I would say, yep, yep, he's dead. Dead for sure. Dr. Frankenstein goes up, says, Now listen to me. I've told you guys, if something's not moving, it must not be alive. Because one of the characteristics of living things is that it must be moving. Right? It must be moving. So, he stares at his apprentice before and says, Let's jolt him. Let's move him up to the top of the roof. Even though he is dead, as confirmed by the doctor, because it is not moving, so it must be dead. And he is not breathing, so he must be dead. Because the characteristic of living things is that they must be moving, correct? And he says to his class, Now, some of you think that because something is not breathing, it must not be alive. Because breathing and moving are characteristics of living things. I will attempt to revive him by jolting him with many, many volts of electricity. Normally, this would kill someone. But in this guy's case, it will bring him to life. Hello everybody, I am hoping that you like that little video, a uh, little Frankenstein video. I wanted to review a couple of things from our last lesson, and the last lesson that we did was talking about characteristics of living things, and uh, I showed that little video because there's two mistakes that students make really, really often when it comes to this, and um, two things that they say sometimes about naming whether or not something is alive, and usually by the time the end of the unit rolls around, they forget this part. But um, remember the characteristics of living things. All living things are made of cells. All living things will reproduce after their kind, pass on genetic material. All living things have a need for and a way to produce energy. They produce wastes, etc. One of the things that, there's two things that students often get wrong, and uh, those two things are number one they say in order to be alive something must be breathing breathing but that's not true because plants don't breathe plants respire and they exchange gases but they don't have lungs the way we do and they don't breathe in a traditional sense of breathing so please don't include that as one of your answers the second thing that people often get wrong is they think that um, in order to be alive things must uh, be able to move be able to move and again in the case of plants if you think about a plant the plant is structured in position and it doesn't go anywhere it's not moving so uh, a plant uh, does not move uh, it might sway in the wind, the leaves might fall to the ground because of gravity, but it doesn't move. So these are two mistakes. Now, getting on with today's lesson, I'm here with uh, Rocky Balboa in the background. My daughter did that. That's actually duct tape art. I'd like to switch the pictures up for you guys so you can kind of tell the difference between things, little visual uh, reminders and such. And um, where's this paper? What is that? I don't know. Um, the birds are chirping outside. I got my coffee today. Today's coffee mug is the teacher of all things mug. Uh, I got this from a former student of mine by the name of Ethan. He picked it up from uh, Universal Studios, so down in the in the states. I like this mug. So I'm caffeinated, ready to go. There's a short assignment that goes along with today's lesson, and then that's it for this week. So this is uh, actually April. 8th, I think, April 8th. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen with you. A new little trick that I learned how to uh, how to do. Um, it's not always working out the way I would like it, but uh, a lot of times it does. And uh, hopefully you're going to be able to see uh, my screen popping in here so that you can see
the notes. And I think you can. So instead of seeing me now, you're able to see the notes. This was, this was from the PowerPoint a couple of days ago. And I'm not sure why it wants to um, advance on its own. Maybe that was something that I built in here. But um, we're talking about cell theory today. So um, because of the wonderful invention of the microscope, uh, the microscope was the piece of technology that enabled us to be able to um, find out about cells. And we'll do a whole section on the microscope and the different scientists that were involved in developing it uh, later on. But without that piece of technology, we wouldn't know about cells. Now in science, when we say theory, a cell theory is actually, hmm, now I'm wondering, is this recording? Uh, Oh boy, I hope it's recording. I'm not sure if it is or not, to be honest. Um, I don't know if it's rec recording the shot. But at any rate, um, yeah, at any rate, um, cell theory uh, is something that uh, continues to grow and develop because we have different types of um, microscopes now. We have different technologies and there's, uh, we're still learning about cells all the time. And you can imagine right now with the COVID-19 virus going around, uh, you can bet for sure that one of the things that they're looking at under microscopes uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is how human cells respond and react and interact with the COVID-19 virus. Um, there are some things that have to do with cell theory. So without the microscope, we would not be able to um, know what types of things are, are out there. Uh, here are some pictures of some cells I've seen under uh, different types of microscopes. So there's different types of microscopes. Like I said, we'll get into that down the road. Uh, blood cells, these are human blood cells. You can see they kind of look like flattened out pancakes with a little divot in the middle. There are um, cells like plant cells and plant cells you can tell these ones under a microscope, they um, are generally uh, boxier, a little bit more rectangular in shape. They've got some special characteristics, which we'll also learn about down the road. Here's some plant tissue. So if you remember from the lessons this week, cells, when they come together, they make tissue. And if you take a really close look inside here, you can see there's different kinds of tissue along the outside edge uh, compared to the inside edge. And that's because even in plant cells, not all the cells are the same. There's specialized ones that do different jobs. There's some cardiac tissue, and these are probably muscle cells inside of some kind of a, a, a mammal or human being. You can see all the little nuclei packed in here. Another type of cell you might have heard about are stem cells. And stem cells are uh, becoming more and more uh, prominent in the news over the last 20 years because stem cells are kind of like blank canvas. They are um, the, the blank canvas that other cells can develop from. So you can kind of think of a stem cell as being a, um, think of a stem cell as being, you know, uh, a cell with the potential to become any type of cell it wants. And uh, depending on the structure and what kind of influence it, it um, undergoes from its environment or because of the instructions in the DNA. Oh, it's garbage day in my neighborhood. I hope, you, hope that's not too loud for you. I hear lots of crows out there and lots of the garbage truck is pulling up. That's kind of, kind of noisy. I'm gonna close my window. There we go, that's a little bit better. So uh, depending on the instructions, that a cell gets, it might develop and grow like we talked about um, the other day into maybe a nerve cell. So a nerve cell can um, start off as potentially a stem cell. But if the instructions are different, it might grow into um, a different kind of cell. You know, it might grow into a more long and striated muscle cell or something like that. Um, there's other types of cells and there's other type of microscopes. So this is a, an image from a more powerful type of microscope called an electron microscope. And again, there's different types of those, but we'll get into which kind. That was a picture of a cell dividing. And here is an even closer view of some cells uh, creeping up. 
And that is a picture of what I'm probably going to go have for lunch later on today, a nice peanut butter jelly sandwich. What does that have to do with what we're learning? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So there's four parts of cell theory. Okay, Modern cell theory basically has four parts to it. Now there's two parts that the other ones are um, kind of grow out of. And the two most important parts of the cell theory are this. Number one, all living things are made up of cells. Now make sure you remember that that doesn't mean all things are made up of, cell, of cells. It's not all things are made up of cells because the garbage truck that went by is not made up of cells. Remember, it's made up of atoms. It's part of, it's, it's made of matter, but it is not made up of cells. You have to make sure that you understand that it's living things, plants, animals, unicellular organisms like amoeba and paramecium. Those are made up of cells. So if something is alive, the number one thing that has to do with cell theory is that it is made up of cells. And the second most important thing that you find in every description of cell theory is that all cells have to come from somewhere. All cells come from pre-existing cells. And if we go back to a picture over here, you can actually see in this picture that this is a picture of a cell about to divide. So that type of cell, I'm not sure what kind it is, but that's a close-up picture of the nucleus within the cell uh, having already dissolved and the chromosomes or the genetic material inside the cell splitting apart and getting ready to become uh, two new cells. The other two components of the cell theory kind of grow out of those two. So the first one is all living things are made up of cells. The second one is all cells come from pre-existing cells. The third component is that all cells or cells are the um, what we call the basic unit of structure and function of any organism. So in other words, if you break down a living thing and you break it down, say you take a starfish, chop off the arm, you take a piece of the arm, you get down to the tissue, you get down to the tissue, you could actually get down to an individual cell that makes up that living thing or that helps to make up that living thing. It's kind of like little individual Lego blocks. You have Lego blocks of different sizes and different shapes that do different jobs. But in the end of the day, if you took an entire Lego village and you broke it down, there would be these individual pieces. That is the second part or the third point of cell theory. And the fourth point of cell theory is that if you want to know about the organism, the living thing, whether it's a plant, an animal, a bacteria, a unicellular organism, whatever, you look to the activities of its cells. So if you want to know about the entire living thing, just look to its cells. If you look to its cells, its cells will help to tell a story about the living thing. I'm going to stop sharing my picture now. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, here it is. Uh, stop the share. So we're back to the normal um, view here. Hopefully you can see all this. So there's a short assignment that goes along with this. I hope you are paying attention today. Rocky and I hope that you are paying attention today. And um, I hope that you uh, have a great day today. That's it for science this week. So what should you be doing? First thing you should be doing is try to start with this week's unit. Go back to the videos and the lessons from Monday and move all the way forward with those short assignments. Get done what you can get done with this unit. Have a good long weekend. It's Easter weekend. I can't believe it. It doesn't feel like it's Easter time yet, but have a happy Easter. Take the weekend. And if you have some time to get caught up on some of the optics assignments, go ahead and do that. But don't do things from January and February. Pick up with the assignments from March, slowly get them in. I'll be looking at them and giving you feedback. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you send me an email or send me a message on that assignment on Google Classroom. Thanks a lot, you guys. Have a great day.